Greetings and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic here on the new schedule. This week I'm bringing a wonderful new book series to your attention. It occurs to me that this book review thing might be a regular installment, so I googled how to do a book review and I came up with a site that told me the seven elements of a good book review. Here they are. The series that I'll be reviewing is called The Indigo Series by Louise Cooper in the genre of fantasy. I absolutely love this series. It was a fast, fun read that made me rethink the roles of female characters in fantasy and the nature of the hero's journey. I like this series for the same reason I like Lord of the Rings. It has strong themes of friendship, duty, and discovering self-awareness when faced with the truth of the heroic journey. The series begins with Princess Angara, who, despite being betrothed to a man that she actually loves, is filled with anger and discontent at her place in life. She yearns, unknowingly, to be more than just the daughter of a king and the sister to the future king. This yearning, matched with her characteristic anger, leads her out into the barren tundra to the Tower of Regrets. The Tower of Regrets is an ancient building built by a man of legend in a time when demons roamed the earth and preyed on humanity. Thus, there are multiple warnings telling people not to go near the Tower of Regrets, and by no means should they ever enter it. Guess what our spoiled little princess does? Angara rashly flaunts all these warnings, goes into the tower, unleashes a demonic horde that ravishes her home, and leaves her with a mixed curse blessing of immortality until she can travel the earth, track down all the demons, and defeat them to regain her rightful place. Thus begins her journey. There are eight books in the series, and each book after the first follows Princess Angara, who takes the name Indigo in respect for her mourning, as she travels the earth and faces off against seven demons. This does seem overly formulaic, but each book introduces a new set of characters that keeps it interesting and fresh. Speaking of characters, as the central protagonist and the core of each book, the reader really has to like Indigo or else these books are going to be a hard read. I'll admit that at first I had my doubts about Indigo's likability. Especially in the first novel, but at moments throughout the entire series, Indigo can be an angry young woman who lashes out at people. Her anger and lashing out at people was a big turnoff for me at the beginning, until I realized that the journey was about controlling her anger and learning to focus it to accomplish her goals. This made it a lot easier to read, and it made her a much more likable character. Which brings us to character development. It was a highly rewarding experience for me to journey with Indigo and watch her grow from a spoiled young princess into a fully independent and self-aware young woman. The more I read, the more I realized that this series is less of an epic quest to save the world and more about one woman's journey of self-discovery. And it is a beautiful and thought-provoking journey. Cooper handles this journey deftly, fighting with a very engaging style. I could see the stories unfolding in my mind, and I never got bored. The writing was fast-paced and fun. How is this not a Hollywood series? I could easily see this series being translated to the big screen, and I can guarantee that every installment would pass the Bechdel test. Hollywood, get on this! The series was published in the late 80s and early 90s, and I'm shocked that I never heard of it until now. As a longtime fan of Marion Zimmer Bradley's work in the historical fiction slash fantasy genre, I'm beginning to understand that the 80s was a time when women were bringing strong female protagonists to the front of their fantasy stories, no longer relegating them to objects of admiration or dutiful and passive servants in a male-dominated hierarchy. Certainly, Indigo does encounter the patriarchy during her journey. In an interesting twist during the sixth book, she spends time within a matriarchal society, and she discovers that even women are prone to tyranny and violence, which is a powerful message for young women looking to make sense of the world. It's clear that we need a balance of both men and women in positions of authority. It is refreshing to read about women who take action as agents of change, and in their own stories, no less. This makes the Indigo series well worth reading. Not only is it a great quest filled with magic, goddesses, demons, alternate dimensions, and talking wolves. But it is also a definite feminist read. And when I say feminist, I use it in the definitive meaning of the word. 
A woman is given the equal opportunity to make her own choices and determine her own life path. I highly recommend the Indigo series by Louise Cooper to anyone who enjoys fantasy adventure novels and everyone looking for a strong female protagonist. And I really do hope that this becomes a movie series. Hollywood, I'm looking at you. I'd like to give a brief tribute to Louise Cooper. She was born in England in 1952 and she hated school so much that at the age of 15 she persuaded her parents to let her quit. She spent most of her time writing stories and at the age of 20 she published her first novel. In her lifetime, she was able to publish more than 80 novels for both adults and children. Sadly, Louise Cooper passed away from a brain aneurysm in October 2009 at the age of 57. While it saddens me that her life was cut too short, this serves as a reminder that we can't wait our whole lives to do something. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. So thank you, Louise Cooper, for giving us your stories. They and you are a true inspiration. And I won't forget to keep writing every day, because I might not have tomorrow. Thank you.